This is a video to demonstrate some methods for eliminating the clicking and popping on a monotribe. Uh, anyone who has one knows it's fairly severe. First I wanted to go over exactly what was causing it. If you look at the schematic here, we're looking at the VCA section, and you'll notice there's a differential amp here, and that is controlled by the envelope generator, and coming in here is the output from the filter. So. When the envelope generator changes volume very quickly on the VCA, uh, that's what causes the clicking and popping because it's, well, anyone who's edited sound, uh, you know, waveforms um, knows that if you change amplitude very quickly and you're not on a zero crossing point, you'll hear a click or pop. And that's what's happening here at the VCA. That's where all the clicking and popping is, is coming from. Uh, and there's a second thing that exacerbates the clicking and popping, let's say raises the volume of it, and that is since this is a differential amp, uh, the bias current on both sides has to be precise. Um, otherwise, it's any clicks or pops, any reduction to zero point will be louder than they need to be. So um, if you notice here, and some of you might have noticed if you've opened your monotribes before that there's a trim pot there to control this bias current. Well, Korg has used a single turn trim pot here in order to save money, of course, for the low cost monotribe, but uh, if you just change that to a 10 turn one and then using a voltmeter adjust precisely the bias currents here and here so that the voltage is exactly the same, you'll notice a, an immediate reduction in the volume of the clicks and pops. So that's a very quick and simple way to uh, decrease the clicking and popping if you don't want to get any more complicated than that. You can see here is the trim pot that um, Korg supplies on the PCB here to adjust the bias current to the differential amp. And you can see I've replaced that with a 10 turn trim pot. I've mounted it out on the top of the board, but um, you could easily mount it on the back as well so that it's adjustable via the back. But since you're using the 10 turn pot and those are very, very low drift, um, I haven't had to readjust this since I did the first time, so I'm not so sure it's necessary that it be on the back side, but in any case, this is, this is what you would uh, attach, something like this, and then, as I mentioned before, you measure the voltage and, and, and adjust it precisely for a zero volume voltage on the um, other side of the differential amp, and then any popping or clicking you do have will be amplified as minimally as possible. So. Again, this is a big help. So here you see an image of the output of the envelope generator, which is controlling the VCA. That's down here, the trace in blue. This happens to be the square wave selection of the envelope generator. And above you see the output of the VCA. And you can see that every time uh, the envelope generator waveform drops down to zero, you get more or less a zero there, no volume on the output of the VCA. If we look at the envelope generator wa wa waveform that has uh, the slow attack, that looks like this. Again, you see some sections where there is no note in the sequencer. There's zero volume, and that's when the generator signal is dropping down to zero. And then lastly, we'll look at the one with the sharp attack. That's this one. Now, all of the clicking and popping happens only when the envelope generator changes voltage um, dramatically and quickly. So, in the case of the square wave waveform, it's only at those moments it's dropping down or going up from zero, these obvious spots. Um, but on the uh, slowly attacking waveform, this one, um, and also the sharply attacking waveform, this one, you notice there's other moments where it's not going down or up from zero, but it's just rising up from a, a decay. And those are also sharp moments. So here we have the oscilloscope stopped and we've got two captured waveforms, the output of the VCA above and the envelope generator, the input to the control of the VCA below. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in on these sections where the voltage and amplitude changes drastically. So if I go into delayed sweep mode, and let's say, for example, we're going to look down here at this area. Now, you'll see right away that where the uh, envelope generator switches in volume, it's just chopping the waveform. Basically, it's 
throwing the waveform from whatever amplitude it's at to zero, the center line. But it's not doing it at a zero crossing of the waveform. And same again on that end. And each of those places where that happens would cause a pop or a click that you would hear. So here we have another captured set of waveforms. Again, the output of the VCA here above and below um, the input to the VCA, which is controlling it. And this time I've used a different wave shape from the envelope generator, the one that has the, the sharp attack and then the decay and again an attack like that. And what we're going to do is zoom in on one of these areas that doesn't go all the way to the zero voltage. And if we move over, whoops, to here, here we are. You'll notice that even at these points, where the voltage doesn't get all the way to zero or be coming up from zero, you can still have problems with instantaneous um, rises or falls of voltage chopping the waveform basically and creating a place right there that would cause a click or a pop. So I tried a number of different things to try to eliminate the clicks and pops. Uh, one thing I tried was to um, take the VCF output and um, uh, find uh, zero crossings and then uh, uh, basically intercept the envelope generator control line which is coming here and uh, by using those uh, zero crossings uh, shift the rises and falls um, to zero crossings so you would avoid the clicks and pops. Um, this method works fairly well for um, places where the voltage is rising or falling to zero volts. It's easy to locate those um, with a gate circuit and then shift the rises and falls to the zero crossings of the VCF. But unfortunately, uh, it doesn't work for points. Uh, so this would work for the square wave waveform of the um, output of the envelope generator. But unfortunately, it wouldn't work for the one with the sharp attack or the one with the slow attack because both of those waveforms have rises and falls um, that aren't all the way to zero and those still produce clicks and pops. So uh, that was a kind of complicated method that works in one circumstance but not in the other so I kind of abandoned it. And instead what I've ended up with is what is actually the simplest solution and the easiest to implement and that is just a cap here across the base of this control transistor. Now it has to be on this other side of this resistor here um, which is coming from that, uh, that DAC we looked at earlier, the digital to analog converter op amp. Uh, here's a resistor in between that and, and uh, that op amp. So we want to um, attach any capacitance uh, we want to add to this side of that line. Um, and of course, whenever you alter the shape of the control line for the VCA, you're going to alter the shape of the out, the total output of the VCA by doing that. So we want to do it in a, a non-destructive way. In other words, we want to be able to um, uh, add the capacitance when we have clicks and pops we want to get rid of, but we want to um, not add the capacitance or be able to switch it off when we um, have, a nor have normal sounds without clicking and popping so that we have as close to our original wave shape from the envelope generator as possible. So uh, I'm going to show you now, uh, using the breadboard, uh, the effects of, of doing precisely that. Okay, so I've got the breadboard set up here. I've got the monotribe running, um, and I've got the, the case mounted above this little um, thing to kind of amplify the sound, so hopefully it's going to be audible on the tape. Um, what I've done is I've tuned the monotribe to basically the worst clicking and popping I could get with no sound. So basically, uh, you know, the sound is adjusted so that you don't actually hear anything but clicking and popping. And hopefully that's coming across. That's pretty bad. So um, while uh, I demonstrate this, I'm basically just going to be um, using this uh, switch right here to switch in and out one or, or two, one or uh, this other cap here. So um, as we do that, we're going to be looking at the oscilloscope um, to see how adding that capacitance 
to the base of that transistor is going to affect the actual um, envelope generator signal self-controlling uh, the VCA. So um, if we come back over here, right now you can see that we have, this is the original envelope generator signal below, and this is um, beyond that 3.3K resistor right at the base, basically, of the transistor that's controlling the VCA. Um, so you can see right now they are more or less identical except for amplitude since uh, the resistor is changing the voltage level, obviously, a little bit. And uh, so I'm going to zoom in now so you can get a good read of how those waveforms change with the capacitance added. So now here we are zoomed in, and hopefully you're still hearing the clicking and popping coming out of the monotribe. If you'll notice, we're on the square wave um, waveform right now, and you'll notice uh, that the clicks and pops correspond exactly to these three areas where the voltage drops to zero. Dot, 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 dot. It's happening at each of those edges. Um, if we flip to one of the other waveforms, you'll notice it starts happening more because there's more of those sharp rises or falls of voltage. Here it's happening at every single one of those drops of voltage there. And the sharp attacking one, that's the worst one usually, worst case scenario. Now they're very loud. They're happening at every one of those sharp rises. So I've got two caps on the breadboard right now. I've, I've experimented with a lot of different ones. Um, you can also do the same yourself. Um, I found from my experiments that 2.2 microfarads across that base of the transistor pretty much eliminates all but the most extreme clicking and popping. Um, so we're going to uh, throw that in first and look at the, the wave shape up here. And uh, the other one I've got a 10 microfarad, which is really heavy duty, and that you know, that more, much more heavily modifies the waveform shape, but that gets rid of everything, basically. So um, here, first of all, is the 2.2. Now you'll notice up here that all of a sudden the sharp rises and falls is our slight attacks and decays instead. So uh, immediately it's mitigated a lot of that clicking and popping. I'm not sure if you can hear on the video or not. There's still slow rumbling kind of pop below. Um, but, you know, in most cases, this, because I have the, the board tuned in a way for all sound to be gone except the clicking and popping, and normally you wouldn't notice this. And so, you know, in, in my, with my experiments, 2.2 mics pretty much takes care of all the problem. But if you are in a situation where you really still are having difficulties, uh, you can switch to the 10 microfarad, which will, I'll show you up here. You'll see, by the way, you'll notice that the waveform is still uh, not so drastically modified from the original, I mean, aside from the drops and rises to zero. But um, the sharp peaks up there, and if we look, for example, at the If we look at the um, slow attacking waveform, the slow attacking waveform has some errors in it, by the way. I don't know if you can see these on the oscilloscope, but there's little sharp peaks, little tiny ones that cause clicks and pops um, where uh, the voltage is, is first coming up from zero. Those are kind of errors in the, in the DAC, pulse width modulation circuitry. And you'll notice that our 2.2 mics across that gets rid of those little spiky errors as well. So um, and now we'll go back to the sharp attack one more time. And now for the final uh, change, I'm going to switch in that 10 mics. And I don't know if, again, I don't know if you can hear it on the tape, but all of that is gone now. There's no sound coming out of there. You'll notice that the wave shape is much more modified up here. Now the the little, that little um, crown there, the sharp rise and little bit of fall has gotten much more rounded and smoothed out. Um, these drops to zeros, those ones aren't even going all the way to zero anymore. 
Um, but, you know, so the waveform is much more modified, but it has eliminated everything. Okay, so that's, uh, that wraps it up here. Um, uh, so again, this is a fairly simple way to get rid of the clicks and pops. You will alter your output sound a little bit, so I, may, I suggest doing it with a, a switch so that you can throw in um, uh, the click and pop suppression when you need it. Um, I will, with my mods, have you know a three position switch. Middle position will be no click pop suppression. You know, one side will be the 2.2 mic cap, so you know normal click pop suppression, and the other side will be the 10 mic cap, which will be extreme suppression. Okay, I hope this has been helpful for people.